Hello and welcome. I regret I can't be present in person at this event, but when the date was picked I was already committed to a job as a video editor and presenter, so as I haven't yet perfected omnipresence, you will have to put up with the virtual me. So where are we after a year in our district? Let's have a little review. I have visited most of the group meetings, some more than once, and individual club visits I have been to by invite only. If clubs wanted to see the DG, all they had to do was ask. But as a working Rotarian, daytime visits are difficult for me and we do need to ensure our district jobs are suitable for working volunteers. I felt it was important at club visits to invite an open format discussion on any Rotary topic that the members wanted to discuss and that has led to some fruitful activities, principally in the area of Rotary survival for the next 10 years, and it has resulted in the will to start new alternative club meetings. There's nothing at all wrong with the meal and meeting style club format if your club can recruit new members, but if that is proving difficult, then your club must offer something different and there is plenty of advice on the how-to from your district membership chair. It all comes down to the vital question, what is your Rotary Club's legacy you're going to leave your community in 10 years time? And that leads on to some other little questions, are your current members still going to be around and actively engaged in community service in 10 years time? And lastly, will they still be physically able? And are we offering a club format that people now want? The new Rotarians are out there, but contactable via social media, which is the online version of the traditional marketing flyer. Clubs that are thriving with the traditional model are fine, but those that are struggling with recruitment are at last realising that the status quo just won't do in order to secure our future, which is good, but there are also those that haven't yet got it. Despite the increasing average age of our members, we have though finished with a plus 1% gain on membership, largely due to the new club, Rotary Social Innovation South East Hampshire, and that is in comparison to previous years where there has been a year-on-year -year average negative slide of 3%. We all know that the crit critical point for member numbers is when next year's subs are due in July. We can only wait and see what the answer is. We started the year with an ambitious target of one new club per AG group but as a result we have only achieved one new Rotary Club in Group 7. However, there is volunteer interest building in both Amesbury and Borden via Twitter and Facebook due to Tim Mason's efforts and many clubs are looking at their options for engagement with younger volunteers. Another bonus is that we have started a new Interact Club in Southampton, so good luck to them. I don't yet think we have our youth events marketing worked out to tell teachers and parents about the opportunity Rotary offers in the new style clubs. That still needs some work and possibly some training for members. Overall picture in RIBI there are 250 new club or satellite group opportunities identified to work on. Some areas where there is currently no Rotary club, in other areas where traditional clubs want to set up alternative meetings for younger members to do their Rotary how and when they want. It is a very saleable idea to say volunteering through Rotary costs a cup of coffee a week and that volunteering is fully covered by a national insurance policy. That cost is of course without all the optional meals. The October in district conference was very successful and was a very different format from before, as it concentrating on helping Rotarians and clubs with new ideas and projects, whilst conferring with the audience, as well as bringing in our all important business partners. 
We were successful financially too with one of the lowest budget conferences and furthermore due to cost control prudence between the conference treasurer Nigel Barnfield and the chairman David Pike, we returned a profit back into district conference reserves. I've also encouraged clubs to look at where their fundraising goes. Is it straight into a black hole in another charity? where there is no resulting publicity for Rotary's efforts? Or has co-branding and detail of who has benefited from the money been arranged before the money is handed over? We need to remember we are a service organisation with people of action, not just unpaid collectors for other charities. A new marketing brochure was produced by marketing chairman Mike Jackson to attract business partners and there are only a few remaining from the original 1,000 that were printed, so clubs have taken up this good initiative. Also, we recognised our business partners with a framed business partner certificate, and clubs gave out framed corporate social responsibility awards, which had a substantive effect on business owners, many of these proudly displaying their certificates in their business reception area. If I finish my district leadership role with clubs looking at the changes they need to make to attract new active members to continue their community rotary legacy for the next 10 or even 113 years and be diligent as to where their money goes and test does it get rotary publicity it should, then together as a district we will have achieved some positive forward progress. Rotary is exciting! So I leave you now with the, in the capable hands of Alan Smith, your offshore DG for 2018-19. Alan, it's all yours. <laughs>